Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to COVID Conversations by way of Zoom for WNCU 90.7 FM. And we're using this platform to talk about how the virus is affecting the way that we live today. My guest today is Barry Schuster. He is a clinical associate professor at North Carolina Central University. He's also editor in chief of restaurantowner.com. And today we'll talk about the hospitality industry and how it's being affected by the pandemic. Hello, Barry. Hello, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's nice to see you. Hey, yes. Thank you so much for agreeing to spend some time with us today. So um, the first question has to do with um, why the pandemic's closing of restaurants has um, been particularly devastating to the economy? Well, Kimberly, the United States restaurant industry, at least before the pandemic, was, it was the largest private employer of any industry in the United States other than the government. So the largest private employer. Um, so that alone was $100 billion, $850 billion industry. Then you have lodging and tourism, you know, they're $400, $500 billion. And so a tremendous amount of loss of jobs, tremendous amount of loss to the economy. You know, not only the people who own and were running these operations and the companies owning and running them, but all the companies are supplying them, uh, including uh, the food distributors. So, you know, there was no other industry that was as heavily impacted. And for a lot of reasons with hospitality for a lot of uh, workers, it's really the first rung of the economic ladder. Um, so, it, you know, I'm not saying other industries haven't been damaged by this, but but hospitality and tourism particularly, and it's really hurt our economy because of it, particularly with all the unemployment claims. So um, what about um, the independent specifically, the, I'm sorry, the um, effect specifically on independent restaurants, you know, those that don't depend, I guess, on a big chain's name for survival? Well, about 70 to 80 percent of restaurant units in the United States are classified as independent. So we're talking about essentially small business from, you know, one unit to maybe a dozen. Um, now, the, the large chains, which we're all familiar with, including the drive-throughs and, and, you know, the, the large uh, full-service restaurants, um, you know, they bring in a lot of revenue. But in terms of the number of units, um, you know, the greater percentage of those are essentially small business and often financed with the personal savings and personal wealth of individuals. And so, um, you know, you're talking about a lot of people who've had their, their lives invested in these businesses and now they're struggling to keep them open if they can keep them open at all. It, it's been devastating. I, I was thinking about the number of people who have had to um, realign the way that they feed themselves, especially if you're used to going to restaurants. Now people are having to do more cooking and more finding other ways to feed themselves than the restaurant industry. Do you, do you think the, the industry will, will um, recover, if at all, after this? You know, I'm bullish on the industry. Um, I believe in the resiliency of the people who are in the business. But, you know, when it comes back, um, it's going to be a lot different than it is now. There are going to be a lot of casualties now, and particularly for small businesses and independents. Um, it's never been an easy business to be successful at, but if you're a small business and the margins are low and you're, you know, you're getting by, but you know, not tremendously well, um, it, it, it'd be almost impossible to stay in business. The large change, change they have revolving lines of credit. Um, they have resources to adapt to this, you know, what we call this new normal a little bit more easily. Um, but we're going to see with the social distancing, with um, the uh, orientation of the consumer to take out and delivery rather than dining in, um, the restaurants that come out of this are going to have to be a little bit different. 
And also they're going to have to win the trust of people um, to go back into the restaurants uh, and show them, hey, we're doing everything to protect your health and make sure when you come in here, um, your chances of, of uh, becoming infected um, are, are no greater than any place else. So what are the kinds of things that we would see from restaurants to try to convince us that it's time to come back and it, it's time to, to eat here? Well, part of that, as you well know, is going to be dictated by the governors of the various states in terms of when they're going to allow restaurants to open and how they're supposed to open in terms of particularly capacity. You know, we're going to allow 50% of capacity in your building and 75%. Um, and then there are uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention guidelines and local health department guidelines and, of course, the really diligent restaurateurs are going above and beyond those. So, you know, restaurants, uh, state government, they're trying to figure out ways to uh, equip the staff so that they aren't as vulnerable to uh, socially distance the guests so they aren't vulnerable to perform various sanitation procedures, changes to ventilation systems. Um, so it's a big deal. It's expensive, um, but it's just what's required now until, you know, we get this pandemic under control. And for some people, as, as you well know, that may not be before there is some type of vaccine uh, that um, can give people confidence they can go out there and protect themselves. I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about mm -hmm. the hospitality industry as a whole, give me a list of some other businesses that make up hospitality. Well, you have you have restaurants um, on food service. You have lodging, so hotels anywhere from you know small motels to very luxury resort type hotels. You have tourism, uh, so you have um, you know places people go uh, for vacations, um, and when they go there, they'll they perhaps stay at a resort. They'll maybe be eating out uh, at different restaurants. You have cruise ships. You have uh, destinations like Disneyland um, and amusement parks and Great Wolf Lodge and all these places that people like to take their children. Um, so you're talking about a lot of employees and a lot of businesses and, and, and businesses that frankly, you know, were very, very successful before this happened and now trying to get people to come back and, and you know, but do it in a way that they're going to protect the, the guests and visitors. And then on top of that, you have all these companies um, such as Cisco and U.S. Foods. You've seen their trucks. Uh, you know, when I go to campus, uh, they also take care of uh, on-campus dining. But, you know, these companies are in the business of, of delivering food to all these places and supplies and equipment. So, you know, it, 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 it's a pretty big industry and the supply chain is pretty big, too. So t talk to me about um, the hospitality industry and um, the driving factors of the industry before COVID-19. Well, you know, in terms of restaurant and food service, you, you know, people, hopefully, uh, um, we all hope that people are able to eat three meals a day. Of course, we know that's not the case for everybody. But so there's always there's demand for food. And as you mentioned, you know, at the beginning of our interview, and you're absolutely right, um, before the pandemic, um, you know, about 60% of meals were um, at restaurants or dining out. You know, people are busy. They're trying to raise families. They got two um uh, breadwinners in the family, and they're not always able to cook meals a day like maybe, you know, what we were used to growing up. And so, um, you know, before that, you had a lot of people who were doing that, doing that, who were getting their food um, off premise or on premises or away from their homes. Um, business travel, um, the airlines, you know, I didn't mention the airlines, they've been badly affected. A lot of businesses conducted at conventions and meetings. I didn't discuss those either. That's really been a huge part of the economy. Um, you know, every profession or trade has their conferences they go to. And so they've been shut down. Some of them are doing them virtually, but, you know, you fully understand when you get, you know, several hundred or a thousand people congregating in Orlando or Las Vegas um, or, 
New Orleans for a conference, you can imagine the amount of money that brings in uh, as well. Oh, so, so you talk, I mean, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, please. So you're talking about money. So what, what is the, the approximate worth of the hospitality industry in the country? You know, and as I said, the, the, the food service industry before the pandemic was about 850 billion. I mean, lodging is about 400 billion. I mean, you're talking about well into over a trillion dollars. Um, you know, when you look at uh, tourism, destinations, restaurants, hotels, um, and then big conventions, um, you know, right now, I, I don't really know what the value of that is at this point. Um, but, you know, prior to the pandemic, you know, you're talking about a total industry well over a trillion dollars in value. And that's just in the U.S. That's a lot of money. It is, yeah. Um, hospitality depends on movement. People moving around to all these different places, restaurants, um, Disneyland, with people um, moving around less freely. It, is the market seeing substantial recovery or where do you think the market is as far as getting back on its feet? It's coming back a bit. Um, I believe right after the, you know, the, the pandemic hit hard, um, you know, late March, early April, and there were shutdowns everywhere. I believe there were about 8.5 million jobs lost. And I think we've had a recovery of maybe 2 million of those jobs back. Um, so, you know, certain businesses are adapting. If, you know, you're following the news, Disneyland is opening up, but with uh, um, precautions for their guests, a lot of businesses, restaurants, hotels are, you know, put their heads together and they're figuring out how, how can we bring people back in safely with confidence um, and what types of procedures and protocols are in place. So there's been a slow recovery. Um, and jobs are coming back slowly. Whether we'll see them coming back to the levels they were prior to the pandemic, uh, I wish I had a crystal ball and could tell you, but um, we're seeing a slow recovery. Um, however, as I said earlier, smaller businesses, independent restaurants, because of lack of access to funding and because it's just difficult to run those businesses, um, I think they've taken a worse hit than just about anyone in the industry. Yes. You think the, um, the travel industry can regain confidence and people starting to travel or, or do they really have to, to have people's um, confidence so much as, as if the doors are open, people will come and people are going to travel? It's hard to say. I'm, I'm getting kind of mixed signals. Um, you know, business travel, um, particularly, regardless of, you know, the fact that we can get on Zoom and have this nice conversation interview, it's always nicer to be in the same room face to face. And of course, business people understand that. So I think there's some resurgence of business. I think the airlines are, you know, doing some of the same things everyone else is doing in terms of requiring masks and so forth. However, you know, uh, I've been just following the news and some of the airlines, uh, the major carriers have really, really had to back off their the number of um, flights they had, they've had to lay off people. Uh, so gosh, it's hard to say, you know, here in North Carolina, um, you know, we're seeing some large tourist attractions that have had to have uh, huge layoffs like uh, uh, the, the Biltmore House in, in Asheville, which, you know, was sort of a major tourist destination all over the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. Um, they had to lay off lots of people. So if the airlines, um, I think business travel is going to be the first thing to come back. Um, I think recreational travel um, and tourism on the airlines that is discretionary, I think that's going to take a little bit longer to get going. People will say, well, I'm, I want to go split with my family, but let's hop in the car and let's go someplace where we can drive, get there in a few hours. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's all the questions that I have. Is there anything else maybe that I didn't ask that you'd like to share? No, I think you covered it well. Um, as, as we had a pretty good overview. Thank you for those questions on, on you know, how this is going to come back, um, you know, as, as a, an academic and as a, um, 
uh, someone who's involved in a media company to help educate, provide management best practices for uh, restaurant owners. You know, I can tell you there are a lot of people out there fighting to help bring this industry back. And uh, um, it's an important industry. I think, you know, people want to get together. They want to break bread together. They want to congregate in fun places together. And it's part of our social fabric. And so, you know, my only comment is I'm just, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, we can, soon have these conversations face to face over a cup of coffee rather than over a computer because I think that would be just much nicer. I think it would be much nicer too. Okay. So, um, so, so thank, thank you very you. much Kimberly. Yes. I really appreciate this and, and you be well. Yes, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it very much and um, my guest has been Barry Schuster. He is a clinical associate professor at North Carolina Central University and editor and chief of restaurantowner.com. My good pleasure, Barry. Thank you. See you later. Thank you so much.